The Handsomest Drowned Man in the World is a story written by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, a prolific 20th century writer from Colombia famous for his short stories. Our story begins with a mysterious object washing up on the shore of a village. The people of the village think it must be a whale, or perhaps a boat, but to their surprise, it is actually an unusually large man. They start freaking. The villagers know right off the bat the man is a stranger, a foreigner. The women of the village clean and dress the body. They see that not only is the man huge, he is beautiful. A handsome man if there ever was one. Perhaps the handsomest man in the world. The handsomest drowned man in the world. The women are practically quaking in their boots imagining what a wondrous life this man must have lived. They imagine him as the type of man who would have a big house and a lot of authority. Then, for some reason, someone's like, Bro, that guy looks like an Esteban. Yo, she's right, they all say. It was true. This man was Esteban. But eventually, the women stop fantasizing about how great he was and imagine his life as being very difficult. After all, such a large man must have been clumsy. A big boob, as Marquez puts it. Yes, Esteban must have been a huge klutz who stumbled into things like an idiot. The women are so moved by this mystical man that they start weeping, softies. Then the men come back with the news that Esteban was not a resident of the neighboring villages either. The women are pleased. He's ours, they say. Then the men get mad jelly, if you will. Women, they think to themselves. They decide they're going to throw Esteban into the sea to get rid of him once and for all. As they take the body to a cliff, the women stall to prolong the inevitable hurling of Esteban into the ocean. Wanting to behold the glory of his face once more, one of the women removed the veil on Esteban's face. The men are all like, dude, that guy's Esteban. The men are moved by his beauty and his sincerity. So then they hold the funeral to end all funerals. Oh, what a funeral it was. Only the best of funerals to honor the memory of Esteban. They got flowers and some more flowers. In the end, they return his body to the waters, which was very hard for them to do because they had all become so attached to this dead body. As they carry his body to the sea, the people realize for the first time that their village is essentially a pile of garbage. After seeing the epitome of beauty before their very eyes, the villagers now realize their village ain't all that. It's got dirty streets and shabby houses. Anyway, they let Esteban go without an anchor so he can return if he wants. The villagers knew everything would be different from then on, for their houses would be bigger and have higher ceilings to honor the memory of Esteban. And that was when they knew, he really was an Esteban, and this is Esteban's village. Here we have a piece with postmodernist characteristics, so we see a lot of violations of literary conventions like run-on sentences and changes in point of view throughout the story. Marquez's writing style in the story is a sort of stream of consciousness format where instead of having coherent sentences, it's a stream of rambling run-ons that never end. One of the paragraphs is two sentences long, and that's not to say it's a short paragraph. What's more, Marquez sometimes abruptly switches to first-person or second-person mid-sentence without any warning, even if the sentence started out as third-person narration. This peculiar tone is bolstered by some weird uses of repetition, like he says Wednesday three times as an adjective to describe something. He says, Wednesday drowsiness, Wednesday meat, and Wednesday dead body. The crux of this story is when the villagers realize how terrible their village is, and how much better it could be after they see Esteban. Once they see the majesty of the handsomest drowned man in the world, they know what they have been missing. Their houses could be bigger, and the streets could be wider. Although we do not see any of these changes actually happen, it is implied that the villagers will live more advanced lives from now on, changing their ways after witnessing the beauty and grace of some dead guy. <laughs> we see a theme of progression among the villagers' way of life, and it's all thanks to Esteban, 
the handsomest John man in the world. And that's why he was the handsomest John man in the world. <laughs>